Hi all. Our instructive game today will have the theme which I call Round the Back. So the game is Vasily Smyslov versus Demetrius Agnos, played in the London Lloyds Bank Masters of 1988. By the way, Agnos was a very, very strong uh, player I'd witnessed in many uh, UK events before he went back to Greece. Um, he was well over 200 ECF. He was beating GMs. In 1988 and 1989, apparently, he, he came second in both years in the World Junior Under-18 Tournament. And he's now a Greek Grandmaster, but a UK um, citizen. So Knight F3 was played by Spizlov. Knight F6 was played by Agnos. And after G3, G6. And now Smyslov already showed quite aggressive intentions on the Queen's side. So in the game, he actually uses a, a very aggressive space strategy later to go around the back on the Queen's side in Black's position. And Agnos played very um, kind of stereotypically on the King's side, as we'll see. He, he uh, plays his pawns very, very aggressively. After d3, we now see knight h5. So the f pawn's unblocked, so we see a classic king side avalanche by black. After knight c3, f5. Now we see the move e3. Now this is a very nice move, because it's really saying to black, you know, play f4, and, you know, I might be able to swap off the dark squared bishops. And, you know, as we saw in yesterday's game, that, that can really backfire on black. So Agnes is not too keen to play f4 now after this e3 move. c6, castles, now we see bishop e6. And now knight d2. So this bishop is unleashed here, and white's going to further pressurise the c6 pawn with a later b5 now. So it's queenside counterplay versus kingside counterplay. But what is intriguing is just, just the way Smyslov infiltrates later on the queenside, going almost as if around the back and letting black come down the board on this side. So there's a kind of very dramatic visual idea which I saw in this game and I was quite stunned by the devastation of the final position. Queen c7 was played. Rook c1 now. Rook a c8. Queen e2. So it looks as though, you know, White's got a pleasant position here. There's a lot of tension. Not one single exchange yet. Bishop f7, and now knight b3 was played. So knight b3 later has the idea of helping support the white queen, go to d2 later, and then to, later to a5, as we'll see. So rook c e8, b takes, was, b takes, and now bishop a3. So black's a bit under pressure now on these points, but also, you know, potentially he has to watch out for white infiltrating on the queen side. So knight h f6, and now we see queen d2. So queen d2 later supports knight a4 and queen a5 because, because of that knight on b3. So going around the back of black's position, g5. So normally, you know, a white player would be scared, especially if Agnos was attacking them like this with these pawns. So it looks quite vicious. Knight a4 was calmly played, though. And after c5, we start to see this strategy of going around the back. Queen a5. And in fact, in the game played in 1989 between these two, with Smyslov again white, this same mechanism was, was used of queen a5. So queen d2 was used as a jumping off point to get into black's position with queen a5 in the year after which Smyslov won. So knight b6, now knight c3. So... The queen is in a very nice position there, pinning that knight, and now threatening knight b5. So after queen d7, rook fd1. So black's really under increased pressure on the queen side now, and lashes out with f4. The problem with this, it does mean extra control on the light squares from white. Knight b5 was played, so this poor a7 pawn is being attacked. And black plays bishop h5. According to Ribka, black's doing okay here, but I'm not so sure. Rook d2 was played, and now knight c8 was played. Ribka prefers just rook f7 to support that a7 pawn. So the knight was stranded there till the end of the game, actually. So m maybe that was a decisive blunder, because it did allow now this infiltration with queen c7. So if we look at this position, just rook f7, and, you know, um, black is, is better, according to Ribka, say, and gives, for example, bishop b2 
as the move here. And then Fe or F3 and, and black would be fine perhaps. So after this retreat, knight c8, maybe this was the critical blunder actually. So in this position, knight c8 was played, allowing queen c7. The point is, after queen e6, now a powerful move is played by Smyslov. Queen c6, and he's got this idea now of knight c7 to d5. So this is starting to be exceptionally unpleasant for, for black. So after rook e7, knight c7 was played. And now, Agnos, he didn't want to face knight d5, he sacrificed the exchange. Ribka recommends the move um, queen f5 after a little thinking. But actually, rook takes c7 was played in the game. So maybe, you know, Agnos, he had underestimated his attacking prospects. Because he did get in move f3, but it sh shows up to be harmless in the game. Bishop f1, and black really hasn't got enough time to exploit this fawn pawn. He plays bishop g4, so he's trying to exchange off the light square bishop and just mate white, but there really isn't enough time. Queen b7, an accurate move, so the bishop is virtually pinned because that f3 pawn would go if bishop h3. So queen e8 was played, so the black queen wants to come to h5 now. It is rather crude. Rook dc2, so a very calm, quiet move, just with the idea of vacating the d2 square. So knight d2 to e4 can be played, or knight d2 just hammering the f3 pawn with more pressure. Queen h5, and now knight d2. So again, bishop h3 is just queen takes f3 here, would be good. So black temporarily blocks that queen from the diagonal with d5. White takes on c5 though now. And now... Rook f7 is played, attacking the queen. So queen a8, so a very nasty pin now on this knight. And Agnos now plays e4. His position is getting completely desperate. According to Ribka, white is actually five units up here. It, it, it does seem quite crushing. And Smyslov simply plays c takes d5. And all of a sudden, these doubled rooks are going to be targeting this poor stranded knight on c8, which is pinned to the black king. So it looks pretty dire. So bishop h3, still with this vague notion of, of of being able to deliver mate on g2. But now, Smyslov plays simply bishop d6. And if black dares take on f1, then rook takes c8 is crushing. Black actually resigns here. But let's have a quick look. If Agnos had played bishop takes f1, then rook takes c8, bishop f8, rook takes f8, and black's position is just falling to bits here in this kind of continuation. After knight takes e4 here, actually it's a mate in 6 by force, whatever black does. Let's have a look, say knight takes e4, queen g8, king f6, bishop e5, king takes, queen e6 mate. But it, it was obviously completely lost here, this position. But it's just amazing, I thought, this final position, how black had been you know, in this totally devastated position. Let's have a look in overview and summary. So Demetrius, he had played a very straightforward looking attack on the king side. But Smyslov had very carefully plotted this kind of queen infiltration via a5 to get around the black, the back of black's position. So once that queen had infiltrated, black was under really great pressure with the queen on a5. And ended up losing the exchange soon after this queen c6 with this idea of knight c7 to d5. So white really relishing these light squares after black had played f4. And now the exchange up. And still with really nothing to fear because he kept kept putting the pressure on that f3 form pawn. So black really didn't have enough time to ever pull off this attack with bishop h3 to take off the bishops and mate white on g2. That was just proven to be a fantasy. So after bishop h3, bishop d6, and Agnos had had enough. I hope you enjoyed that game, and please leave any comments on YouTube.